It's almost unbelievable. It's almost too extraordinary to be real. But it is real. This is Carcassonne, near the Pyrenees Mountains in southern France, about 382 miles south of Paris and 70 miles from the border with Spain. Carcassonne's destiny was not so much written in its stars as it was written in its geography. It sits on a wide, open plain along the shortest land route between the Mediterranean Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. It has been a major trade and migration route for millennia. There's archaeological evidence of human habitation as early as 3500 BC. The Romans understood the area's strategic significance. They built a fortress here in the year 100 BC. Successive generations added on until Carcassonne looked much as we see it today by the mid-13th century. The city's double walls with 53 towers run nearly two miles in circumference. For defense and depth, the castle was built starting in the year 1130. It's now the city museum. The Basilica of Saint Nazir was built starting in the year 1096. Pope Urban II, who launched the First Crusade, came to bless the foundation stone of the new cathedral. Carcassonne's relations with the Roman Catholic Church have not always been cordial. The area was home to a religious sect called the Cathars, who did not believe much of the church's teachings. A papal army was sent to root out the heresy and many lost their lives. Carcassonne also played a major role in the Inquisition. Those suspected of heresy were brought here to be tortured into confessing their apostasy. Forbidding fortress walls kept most invaders outside, including the Emperor Charlemagne, whose army laid siege to the town. Folklore says a woman, now immortalized in stone at the main entrance to the fortress, came up with an idea to get Charlemagne to leave. They gave the last of their food to a pig. After it had been fattened up, they threw it over the wall. Charlemagne's army concluded that if the people inside had enough food to throw fat pigs at them, they would never give up. So they left, and the city was saved. Carcassonne was also besieged in the Hundred Years' War by Edward, Prince of Wales, also known as the Black Prince. By the time of the French Revolution in the 18th century, Carcassonne's days as a great fortress city of military significance were long past. The place had fallen into such disrepair that only the poorest of the poor lived there. In 1849, the government was ready to demolish the fortress so that its stones could be recycled for new building projects. City leaders and those interested in historic preservation argued that it should be saved. In 1853, architect Eugene Violette Ledoux was given permission to begin the restoration. In 1997, his efforts were recognized when Carcassonne was declared a World Heritage Site by the United Nations. By day, motor vehicles are not allowed in the city. In the morning, the place fills up with hundreds of tourists and school groups. There are very few full-time residents here, but there are several excellent hotels inside the walls. At night, when the crowds have left, you can walk the quiet streets and imagine what it must have been like to live here hundreds of years ago. You can also stop and enjoy a quiet dinner and a glass of wine. You can also walk outside the walls for a stunning view of the fortress, illuminated by giant floodlights against the night sky. Carcassonne is magical. There is almost no other place on earth like it. Carcassonne, now well preserved and protected for generations to come, is well worth the effort to come for a visit. <laughs>